This is Elias, and you are watching Ophthalmology with MAS. Today we are going to do all of the examination in a darkroom test. So the examinations in a darkroom test are basically divided into two. One is ophthalmoscopy, and the other is retinoscopy. Ophthalmoscopy has three components. One is called distant direct ophthalmoscopy. Direct ophthalmoscopy and then indirect ophthalmoscopy. So today we are going to do indirect ophthalmoscopy, which is a component of the darkroom test. As we had mentioned earlier, the limitation of direct ophthalmoscopy is that you can only see seven degrees of the retina. So if you want to see the whole retina starting from ora serrata till the end, you have to do an indirect ophthalmoscopy. So in order for you to do indirect ophthalmoscopy, you can either use Condensing lenses, this is a super field or a 90 adapter lens, and this is used when you are examining the fundus through a slit lamp. And as you can see, the image is inverted in this and slightly minified than what it is generally. Now you can also use a 78 adapter lens when you are using the slit lamp. Now, if you see the difference between a superfield or a 90 adapter lens and a 70 adapter lens is that in the 90 adapter lens, the image is minified, but the field of vision is more. Whereas in a 70 adapter lens, the image is bigger than the one with the 90 adapter or superfield, but the field is smaller. However, in both of these lenses, the image is inverted. So this is the real image, whereas when you use these lenses, it minifies. Now, if you are using an indirect ophthalmoscope, you use either a 20 adapter lens or a 20 adapter lens. Now, if you compare this with a 90 adapter or a super field. The image is much smaller in the 90 adapter. Both images are inverted and the field of view is much more in the 90 adapter where it's lesser in the 20 adapter lens. We are doing a slit lamp examination or an indirect ophthalmoscopy or an indirect opth ophthalmoscopy through a slit lamp. You have to dim the lights. If you are examining the right eye, you will hold the lens in your left hand. You will ask the patient to put his chin on the chin rest, the forehead against the forehead rest. The canthus is at the level of this gauge. You will ask the patient to look at your ear and then by introducing the lens, between yourself and the patient, you will look at the fundus and then you will ask the patient to look up so that you can look at the superior retina. You will ask the patient to look up and left and then left and then left and down and then down, and then down and right, and then right, and then right and up. In, so this is done so that you can see the whole retina in its extremity till the ora serrata. Once you have done the examination of the right eye, you are going to hold the lens in your right hand. You have to examine the left eye. You will ask the patient to put his chin 
and then ask him to look at the left ear while you introduce the lens and then examine the left eye's fundus. If you do not want to use the slit lens, the patient is uncooperative and you are looking at the uh, at, a, at a child who is not as cooperative, then you can use the indirect hat or indirect ophthalmoscopy, for which you will put the indirect on your head. You will switch on the light after adjusting your IPD, and then you will adjust the size of the aperture, and then you will Hold the 20 adapter or a 10 adapter lens. You are going to dim the lights and then if you are examining the right eye, you will hold the lens in your left hand, ask the patient to look at right ear and then introduce the condensing lens and look at the posterior pole and then to look at the extremities, you are going to ask the patient to look up and left and then left, and then left and down, and then down, and then down and right, and then right, and then right and up. Similarly, when you want to examine the left eye, you are going to shift the lens to your right hand, and then ask the patient to look at your left ear, while you introduce the lens in between yourself and the patient, and then ask the patient to look up, and then up and right, and then just right, and then right and down, and then down, and then down and left, and then left, and then left and up. So that you can examine the whole of the extremity. So if you look to the right fundus, you see the macula which is to the right of the optic disc, whereas when you look at the left fundus, you see the macula which is on the left of the optic disc. And then when you introduce the lens, the macula shifts to the right of the optic disc so this this so everything is inverted and minified and the image is real so whenever you introduce a condensing lens you cause the image to invert the image to become minified and the image to become real similarly the macula on the right and as soon as you introduce the lens, the image becomes inverted, smaller, and you are seeing the macula to the right of the optic disc. And when you introduce the lens, it shifts to the left. My finger is below the fovea, but when I am introducing the lens, my finger goes above the fovea. Thank you.